Hello and welcome to Dish Talk. I am your host, Dan Donahue. We just got back from Phoenix. We are now back in beautiful Los Angeles for a whole day until I go back to San Diego. Before I start this video, I just want to say, please subscribe, please comment. Uh, and if you're wondering, what do I comment? I'm embarrassed. What could I comment? Comment an emoji of a pigeon if they make that. It doesn't matter. It just helps the video. Um, I was doing stand-up in those beautiful places. And I got home uh, two nights ago, and I'm burnt out. And my, when you're burnt out, and by the way, before anybody comments anything on this, stand-up comedy is a completely unnecessary, completely trivial pursuit. And stand-up comedians should feel three times worse than they do because the job is so fun and we are so lucky. I, let me just say that. Any social media, like, they're, they're about to ban TikTok. They're thinking about banning TikTok. They decided to ban TikTok. I don't know what they're doing with TikTok. But a lot of people who make their living on TikTok, and I do feel bad to a degree for a lot of them. Um, and, and by the way, I make most of my money on there. Um, but if you're going online, like, please, please give me money, like, just to support me. It, hey, hey, look at me. There were jobs out there, and you could get one. Never forget that. If you are in entertainment, never forget that just outside the walls of your home or your hype house or your media production compound, there is a whole world, and that world is filled with jobs. You know, the thing that every other person has to work to support themselves. That for some reason, uh, the powers that be, or luck, or whatever, has decided that you you don't need to do that. You get to make little videos for a few years, and when that dries up, guess what? The jobs are right there waiting for you. I never forget that. You know the, the old saying, never quit your day job? I quit my day job maybe like a year ago, but I never forget my day job. I never forget my day job. And if I have to go back... Uh, well, that's fine. That's not a big deal to me. But anyway, I say that to say this. I drove to Arizona uh, with my feature, Killian. We did a podcast, if you're interested in watching that. Uh, and when I got home, my brain just, just said no. My brain just decided to not do the things that I wanted it to do. That happens to our brain sometimes. Sometimes we get home and we sit down and we go, okay, brain, how about you come up with some positive thoughts? And then your brain is like, hmm, well, how about we go over every mistake you've ever made? And you go, interesting choice. Uh, why would we do that? And then your brain's like, sorry, too late. I'm already, I'm already at, at fifth grade when you let that fart out. You remember that? When you let that fart out in fifth grade and the girl you thought was cute saw and then never talked to you again? And you're like, our uh, brain, let's, let's focus in a little bit here. We, you need to make peace with the fact that sometimes your brain does that. You need to make peace with the fact that sometimes your brain is going to do stuff you don't want it to. And this is where letting go of that, like, everything's going to be great kind of mentality comes in. Because you, you don't want to, like, try to force those thoughts out. You want to kind of make peace with them. You want to understand that as your brain is just kind of recalibrating and you need some downtime. And sometimes it's very valuable because when you go into that, that sort of dark little place, you can sort of realize things that you were forgetting about when things were all good. You can recalibrate your life in a way because you do kind of leave things by the wayside when you're all positive all the time. You're not thinking about, ah, this could change, this could change because you're like, oh, things are good enough. And then sometimes your brain is like, things aren't good enough. Things are bad right now, and you go, Ugh. but it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. I got home, and, uh, and I kind of felt that heaviness. I felt that weight, and, uh, you know, I, I have good coping mechanisms that I'd like to kind of share with some of you, because I think you need those. I think you need coping mechanisms. I think, I think when your brain starts doing stuff you don't want it to, you can't just recede into this kind of, like, fortress of distraction. I don't think that's a good idea. I think that we've become really accepting of that, but I don't necessarily think that's a great thing. There's nothing wrong with sitting around and watching YouTube videos all day. There's nothing wrong with, you know, taking a little time on your phone, listening to Spotify. Absolutely not. 
but sometimes that can be a distraction. And I can hear the voices come up and say, oh, let people enjoy things. Let people enjoy. And to that I say, why? Why would I do what you tell me? No, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to, oh, what, because you want me to? No. I will continue to complain about the things you enjoy. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, when it comes to feeling bad, when it comes to feeling down, I think one of the things that I do that's really important and that I should do more is I shut off media and I just sit alone with my own thoughts. You remember that? You remember your own thoughts? Remember a few years ago when you would have your own thoughts? Th that was a crazy time, wasn't it? And now, any time that you have thoughts that pop up and they're like original thoughts that you came up with, they kind of scare you. You're like, whoa, whoa, where did that come from? Oh, the depth of my inner being? Get that out of here. Put on Doja Cat. <laughs> get, that, get that pesky thought out of here. I want to play Doja Cat. But it's a good thing. It's a good thing to have your own thoughts. It's a good thing to have your own internal monologue that is not the voice of a podcast host or uh, a alt-right media representative. I think it's a good idea to maybe have your own thoughts from time to time. And uh, when you start developing that, you realize one of the prerequisites is silence. A little bit of silence is very good. You need a little bit of silence in your life. And there's people out there who think that it is impossible for them to experience silence. There are people out there who say things like, I can't be silent, I need music playing all the time. I need music playing all the time. I can't meditate. You know, you know, I love that. I love when people are like, oh, I, I can't meditate. Meditating's not for me. I think it's like, oh, like I, I get so uncomfortable and anxious when I meditate. It's like, oh, the thing that requires you to look at your life for even a second makes you really, really anxious. Maybe that's something worth pursuing. And by the way, this isn't me shaming you. You know, not everybody needs to meditate, but I'm just proposing something here. And I, maybe you're not used to someone pushing back on you on this, and I do apologize if that makes you uncomfortable, but if you're a person who goes, I can't meditate because having a moment of introspection and silence makes me extremely uncomfortable and I want to jump out of my skin, may I propose that perhaps that's something worth pursuing. Perhaps that's something that you shouldn't just go, yeah, that's, that's not for me. <laughs> Whoa, being alone with myself makes me uh, completely, unconsolably anxious. I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to listening to Boy Genius. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back because Boy Genius... I mean, actually, that's not a good, that's not a good comp. Boy Genius does make you introspective. Listen, Phoebe Bridgers especially. I, I've heard, and this is, uh, I, I'm going to go back to what I was talking about before, but let me just say this. Phoebe Bridgers, a lot of people have some negative things to say about Phoebe Bridgers. A lot of them, they don't get it. They don't understand, okay? Stranger in the Alps is a great album. Oh, it's, it's too sentimental. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, you dummy. Listen, to you. I sound like I sound like a construction worker defending Phoebe Bridge. Listen to me, all right? You just don't get it. You cannot get it, you dummy. But you you can't just sit there and go, I don't get it. Listen, Strange in the Alps is supposed to be overly sentimental, okay? It's a play and a step forward for the emo theme, but uses much more intricate instrumentation, all right? It's not just some guy with an acoustic guitar going, I miss my girlfriend. No, there's synth. There's strings. It's a beautiful, beautiful album, okay? <laughs> let's, let's go back to what I was talking about before. Um, <laughs> listen, no, you got to use a drywall anchor if it's drywall. But if it's plastic, you got to use a toggle bolt. Now, listen to me. Julie Baker's guitar is great. All over the album, Julie Baker's guitar, it cries throughout the album. <laughs> um... But, uh, but yeah, so I, I got home from, from Phoenix and my brain felt really bad. And, uh, I'm, I'm one of those people that had to learn 
when other people are having problems, especially with their minds, you can't necessarily give them solutions right away. A lot of the times people don't want to hear solutions. They don't want to hear your proposed solutions. A lot of the times people just want you to sit and listen to them. So that's what you should do. You should sit down and you should listen to them tell you problems that they have that you have the solutions for. That's what you should do. You should sit there and hear them explain to you their issues and then your brain will come up with very easy solutions and you just keep those to yourself. That's what, that's what, that's what being a friend is. Um, but no, I, I, I had to learn uh, to actually do that. I'm, I'm, I kid, but it's like that is a good way of being. You shouldn't uh, immediately be a fixer at all times when someone tells you their problems. You should sit with them a little bit and you should hear what they have to say. And if you're like me, you are white knuckling the couch, you are shaking and your brain is just going, please, please let me tell them to go outside. <laughs> Please, please let me tell them to exercise. Please, please, please. And you have to tell your brain, no brain. We're listening right now. This isn't some Rubik's Cube for us to solve. This is your buddy. And your buddy's going through a rough time right now. And sure, would it maybe help? Sure. Yeah, maybe that would help. But right now they're not looking for a doctor or a psychiatrist. Maybe they should. But they're talking to a friend. And, you know, you, you, you have to act in that capacity for them. So... Uh, you try to do that for yourself too. So when you're feeling bad, instead of immediately trying to remedy that, it's not a bad idea to sit with it for a second. I know this is an unpopular opinion. And by the way, this doesn't go for everybody. There's people who have, you know, things going on where depression is a little bit more of a red flag issue, like feeling bad, feeling down in that way, uh, is a little bit more of a problem but if you're regulated if you're balanced in a way where you can feel bad for a little bit and you know you won't hurt yourself or hurt others I think it is a good thing for just a little bit sit with that sit with the, see if see if your brain and body are trying to tell you something and there's healthy ways to cope with sadness but even those can get out of hand when you're trying to completely optimize yourself in this way where it's like if you feel a little bad, sure, would, would going on a 25-mile run make you feel better? Sure, it pro probably would. Your, your endorphins would start kicking off, right? Your, uh, you, you know, you would probably piss yourself a couple times on that run, I'm sure. I'm sure that feels like a freeing experience for you. But I really do think this, and I, I might be wrong, but before you go on the run, I think it's not a bad idea to sit with yourself in silence a little bit and just try to see if your depression is trying to tell you something because generally feeling like that if it's not a clinical thing feeling like that can just be your brain being like we're doing something wrong dan the reason that you're uh the reason that you're sitting down in your shower is not because you've made the best decisions let's maybe try to see if we have some solutions for that I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing to have that from time to time as long as it's within a healthy balance, right? And I think a lot of that comes back to silence. You need some silence. I'm really sorry if that makes you feel uncomfortable, but you need some silence in your life. It's your brain's way of having its own internal dialogue and that is a good thing. You should not constantly be listening to other people's internal dialogue. That includes this. I know that this is not a good, but by the way, I hate this about like social media in general is that the people who, you know, make social media videos and stuff because it's, it's their own way. It's like, this should be an appetizer for your life. The little videos that you watch, I don't think they're necessarily bad. I mean, if I did think they were really bad, I wouldn't make them. They're meant to be an appetizer in your life. You are not meant to go on your phone and look at little videos every time you feel a little bit uncomfortable or you feel like you have to think for yourself a little bit. You, it's not good. And, and by the way, you can do not good stuff. You can, smoking's not good either. I have plenty of friends who do that. I'm not sitting around being like, oh my God, you should never do that. But 
if it's if it's like a net neutral, then get rid of it, right? At least to an extent. Again, I think it's okay to sit around watching little videos sometimes, but there's a difference between sometimes and it's taking your whole life. And with kids especially. And I love I love the idea, by the way. This one, you know what? We might we might we might be coming over a, a Dan's con Dan's controversial takes. I love I saw a iPad parent response video. This is how crazy the internet's gotten. Is we see like babies, toddlers, 10-year-olds on iPads, and I think society as a whole goes, I don't know how great that is. I don't know how great that is. And there was a parent who made a response and like the response was really emotional, like, you can't freaking tell a person how to raise their flipping kids and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, all right, okay, to an extent, I understand that. But their whole point in the video was literally just like, parenting is hard. And it's like, oh, oh, that's your point. That parenting, so you should just be allowed to put your kid on an iPad all day. Because we, we know parenting is hard, by the way. The childless community is not sitting around like parenting is the easiest thing in the world. That doesn't mean that the way you parent is necessarily good. Just because something is hard does not mean that the way you're doing it is good. Parents are the most defensive people in the entire world because they decided to take a difficult undertaking and whenever anybody is like, hey, maybe, maybe don't hold your kid upside down, they're like, you have no idea what it's like to have a kid. Not saying I do. I know they're not supposed to be upside down. I, 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 I don't have a kid. I don't know what it's like to have a kid. I know they're not supposed to be going through, like, uh, Reddit snuff films all day. I don't know what it's like to have a kid. I know they're not supposed to be seeing the worst injuries on 4chan while, while you're on your cell phone, okay? Don't act like your kid is on their, the iPad for any reason other than the fact that you want to be on your cell phone at the restaurant. That's why. That's why the kid's on. Let's be honest for a second here. I'm going to go grab a rag so I can uh, wipe this down. Let's, let's both look at each other and let's be honest for a second. The, the addiction to screen time has led you to a, uh, an impasse in your life as a parent where you go either I parent my child or I look at my phone and you chose phone. Dan, you don't know what it's like to raise a kid. No, no, I don't. I don't know what it's like to pilot a plane either, but I know if you're doing it, it's probably not a good idea to land the plane while you're on TikTok. I probably can say that as a guy who has never flown a plane before. So let's just, let's just be on, let's not be defensive, okay? And let's not act like someone can't have an opinion on something just because they don't have first-hand experience with it. It's just not how anything works. It's not you have opinions about stuff that you don't have first-hand experience with, so do I. That's just how it works. Um, maybe the kid gets an hour off the iPad where they have to look at a tree and breathe oxygen. <laughs> um, anyway, that went down a hole, didn't it? That went down a, that went down a steep hole. Uh, that was Dish Talk. I'm your host, Dan. Uh, please subscribe. Check out the podcast, Dancers, uh, all that. And I appreciate you. So thank you for watching. Have a good one.